I was poking around on Facebook Marketplace and I just found a 1961 Fender Music Master, all original, original case, very cool guitar, very clean. Guy only wanted $1,000. So let's go to the bank, let's get some cash, and let's go pick it up. And I'm not going to pay $1,000. Listen, this guitar I should be able to double my money on. Should be able to sell this one for like $1,600, maybe $1,400, but even then, uh, the guy has already committed, I'm going to get it for $850. So let's go get money. I'll drive down and then I'll uh, do the deal. I'll try and bring you along as much as I can. And then at the end of it, I'll give you some of the tips and tricks and like the details of how this deal came to be. Uh, time lapse time. Hey Rick, uh, this is Jeremy with the, uh, we were talking about that uh, Music Master. So I just pulled up to Food Lion, but I also uh, just saw your message. And uh, yeah, sorry, thought we we made a plan to be here at four. Uh, but yeah, man, so give me a call. Let me know if you're like, when you could be here. Um, Cause it's about a 45 minute trip for me. And I just got here. So hopefully maybe there's somebody at your house now that can run the guitar over or something and we can figure it out so all right man give me a call when you get a chance i can be here for another like 10 15 minutes and then i gotta head back so it's about a 45 minute trip for me to get here 20 minutes ago he sent me a message saying like hey I, uh can you meet later i've got to do something and then he said he was driving to another town that's i would bet it's about an hour from here and uh so that sucks and not cool man Hey Rick, this is Jeremy again. Uh, haven't heard from you, man. I've hung around as long as I can today. I still like. I'd, I'd like to buy the guitar. So uh, give me a call if we can meet. Uh, maybe we can meet somewhere closer, up close to my way. All right, man. Well, uh, yeah. Let me know. Sorry we miscommunicated. Give me a call when you get a chance. See ya. Man, show up when. <laughs> show up on time when you when you make a deal. Show up. So. Sucks. The deal on the Music Master is officially totally dead. So I wanna show you how I both got to this place because the tricks that I used will work. They will help you buy cool guitars in real life. Um, but, I mean, this is kind of that Jeremy Wade moment. You know, if you've ever watched River Monsters and you see him get like this great fish and you can see it from the boat and when you're just out of reach, the line snaps and you see it disappear back into the water. So they're both Tricks that I used that got me to this place that will work, that have worked, uh, they just didn't work this time. And then there's also some things now that I look at that deal, what went wrong, what happened, and what I probably think happened in the end. How I got to this deal, I was, I was scouring Facebook, Craigslist, Reverb. I was looking at every local newspaper. I'm trying to find cool guitars and gear because I think it's time to start getting out again and to start to and it is time to start finding cool guitars again. I found this guy on Facebook. It was on Facebook Marketplace. It was a 1962 Music Master, so this was a slab board. Looked very original, had a couple dings and dents, but it was a very cool, looked like a Survivor guitar. Also had the cool brown early 60s pre-CBS case. Everything about this guitar just looked very cool. And so he was asking $1,000, which is not far off, but it's, it is a deal that feels a little too good to be true. So, especially since the guy knew what it was, he called it in the description, he called it a pre-CBS Fender. Uh, he was asking $1,000 and I was still working and I had stuff to do, I couldn't leave just yet. And I said, so the first thing I did and you should do too is start communication as quickly as you can. So I sent him a message and I just said, this is a super cool guitar, I'd love to own this. Can you meet today? I have cash. I didn't give a number right away, I just wanted to give him that dopamine hit of someone wants to buy my guitar, they have cash and they can meet today. 
Those are things that you want them, you want them to get those feel goods so that they want to interact with you. So the second thing was then I, we negotiated and that's something I don't typically do. Uh, it's starting to change. I'm starting to do more negotiation beforehand and then by the time we get there, the deal is locked in barring any crazy condition or other issues. He was asking $1,000, I came back at $800 and he said, well, I can't do that. I could do 900 today. And I said, how about 850? I'll run to the bank and I'll be there in 45 minutes. And he said, that's great, I'll see you there. He then sent me his phone number and he sent me the address of the parking lot. We were gonna meet in a grocery store parking lot. I ran to the bank as quickly as I could. I jumped in the car, I ran down and I got there and I knew what town we were meeting in, but I didn't know exactly where uh, this grocery store was. So I opened the maps and while I was opening the maps, I saw a notification from him that said, it was kind of three or four texts that he'd sent in the Facebook Messenger chain. So the first one was, can you do a little later today? And then a couple minutes later it went to, I have to run to this other town. And then uh, 10 minutes, 12 minutes before we were supposed to meet, he said, I gotta run, uh, I'll text you later. And then that's when like, for me, like that dump of adrenaline happened where I was like, what? Like I am already, I'm 40 minutes down the road from my house. I'm basically like, I'm pulling into the town that we were supposed to meet at the time we agreed to meet. I have cash in my hand. And so at that point, just radio silence. I, he'd given me his phone number, so I called him and went to voicemail. I have a Louisiana number, I'm in Virginia. People don't usually answer because they think it's a spam call. But I called again, he didn't, this time it only rang once and I could tell that he sent it to voicemail. So then I texted him, uh, I texted him and I saw that he read it. <laughs> And then I sent him a Facebook messenger message just like, hey man, I'm still here. I was kind of playing a little dumb because I just wanted to make sure that he was there. Because my the pivot I saw was, well, maybe someone is at his house. Maybe he has his wife or his kid or somebody uh, could bring the guitar to me and I could buy it. I hung around for about 20 minutes, uh, but by then I had to get back home. I couldn't stay any longer. And so the deal was on pause at that point, because he, the last thing I'd heard from him was, hey, I'll get back to you, I'll text you later. And so I drove home, hit some traffic, it was about an hour for me to get home. Uh, that's when I just kind of like put my phone away. A normal trick for me is I just kind of put my phone on do not disturb after five o'clock and I try to just be present with my people. So later on, after the night was kind of winding down, I was like, I wonder if he ever messaged me back. So I went over to my phone, and I saw that the listing had been changed to sold, which is fine. Like, listen, I know that I'm not the only one that was going after that guitar. Um, and he doesn't even really owe me an explanation, but it is rude, <laughs> like, that he knew I was driving there. He knew that I was 10 minutes out. He ignored my phone call when I was sitting in the parking lot waiting for him. I sent him a message like, hey man, I hope you, like, I saw you sold the guitar. Congrats, like I'm glad you I'm glad you sold it. Did you get what you were asking for? Like it's it's okay that you sold it to somebody else. I just would have appreciated you you giving me a little bit of heads up so I didn't waste an hour and a half or two hours of my time driving and waiting for you. So anyway, the deal's dead. Along the way there were a couple red flags. So this is the second half of what so the first one was how did I get there? These deals, you know, clear communication and all these things, but then there's this other side that I wanna show you of what are red flags that you probably should look for in a deal that mean the deal might fall through. One, does it just seem too good to be true? For me to find a 60s original, he said it was a second owner, very clean, very tidy, uh, given it's not a Strat, it's not a Tele, it's a Fender from the 60s for a thousand bucks. And the fact that, cause that already seems like it's too good of a deal to be true. And then he's gonna give me money off of it. He's gonna take 850 bucks for it. That seems crazy. I probably should have like, I probably got a little greedy. I should have just paid a thousand bucks. I think if I would have offered a thousand, which I still could have made, you know, four to six, $700 on it. I think I probably got a little greedy. So maybe I should have just stuck to the asking price. That's an important lesson. Sometimes you need to just pay what they're asking. They might not be as endeared to you to close the deal. I don't text and drive. We made a deal and in the time it took me to drive to get to that deal, there were text messages or there were messages through Facebook that the deal changed or the deal was basically kind of put off or delayed. In the end, I had a great 
I had a great drive through the country. Got to see a really pretty part of the Shenandoah Valley that I don't normally go to. And then the other red flags are just poor communication. He knew at least what it was, and he'd been very communicative when we were setting up the deal, and then he just fell off. So that's the red flag of like, something has changed, something's gone on. Listen, this is not a bad guy. Uh, I'm sure that he's just a guy who found a guitar from his family. I don't think he's a player. I get it. Life is stressful, things are weird, things change. Uh, the deal fell apart. All that to say, I'm gonna keep using these same tricks. I'm gonna go find some cool guitar. So I'm into a new season of, we've got money and I've got opportunity and I've got time to find cool guitars and gear. So I'm gonna take you along. I'm sorry this one didn't work out. I, <laughs> I'm pretty bummed about it. I was really excited about this guitar and I'm kind of bummed that it didn't work out. Uh, but all that to say, I'm glad that we're in this together. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I wanna teach you how to find badass guitars and gear and I wanna show you when I get to do that. So I'm looking for cool stuff all the time and I'll let you know as things happen. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. That would help me to grow the channel. I think there are a lot of you that would really benefit from knowing how to set up the deal, how to close the deal, how to buy cool guitars, how to set them up, how to get the most out of them. I wanna help you fill the world with music and friendship because that's what guitar hunters do. If you wanna buy a t-shirt, go to my Reverb store. They are super soft, super comfy, they're black. They're very cool, uh, you should get one. And uh, that is a great way to support the channel and help me to continue to make these videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.